is this Green's theorem? It certainly doesn't really look like it just yet. Let's investigate Green's theorem path integral. So Green's theorem is written there at the top of your screen. As I said at the start, C is anti-clockwise and DL of course has to be tangential to it. That's the definition of DL. Now we need to do a small bit of thinking here and it's 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 a bit of logic but it's not 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 very straightforward. It's quite subtle. N hat, the normal, will always of course be uh, perpendicular to our curve. Our curve is in, is in green here, whereas DL is, is purple and that's tangential to our, to, our, to our curve. Now the magnitude of course of our normal vector has to be 1. I mean that's the definition of our unit normal. Next we look at the definition of DL. DL is none other than dx i hat plus dy j hat. Okay there's nothing out of the ordinary there. But if dl is going this direction here and n hat is going this direction here, then n hat dl must be perpendicular to dl. This is because by multiplying by dl hat we're changing the direction of dl. We're keeping the mag magnitude the same but changing its direction. Since n hat is perpendicular to dl, n hat dl is perpendicular to dl. Of course the magnitude of n hat dl is going to be the same as the magnitude of dl because the magnitude of n hat is none other than 1. Consider a new vector. I'm going to call it dl prime just to distinguish it from dl. But let's say instead of having it plus dx i hat plus dy j hat it's minus dx i hat plus dy j hat. If you think about it, dl prime is also perpendicular to dl, which means it is parallel to n hat dl. Now what is the magnitude of dl prime? Well, the magnitude is nothing else but the, the sum of the squares of the components square rooted. But the negative component here inside the square is going to, get, going to become positive and as a result the magnitude of dl and the magnitude of dl prime are the same. You might be saying to yourself, who cares, get to the point. The point is this, we already saw that n hat dl, the magnitude of that, excuse me, is equal to the magnitude of dl. But so is the magnitude uh, of dl equal to dl prime. Therefore, n hat dl is equal to, or the magnitude of n hat dl is equal to the magnitude of dl prime. And both of them point in the same direction, perpendicular to dl. We must therefore conclude that n hat dl is equal to dl prime is equal to minus dx i hat plus dy j hat. We are going to use this in order to manipulate the left hand side of Green's theorem. That the closed line integral of R dot D, or the, excuse me, the closed line integral of R dl. So R dot dl is R sub x i hat dot dx i hat plus r sub y j hat dot d y j hat. Doing the dot product we get r sub x dx plus r sub y dy. Now, if we think about it, there is another dot product which is reasonably similar which will give the same result. Consider taking the dot product of minus r sub x i hat plus r sub y j hat with minus dx i hat plus dy j hat. This of course also equals r sub x dx plus r sub y dy which is of course the closed line integral of r dot dl. 
which is exactly what we started with up here. Now, we saw up here that minus dx i hat plus dy j hat can be rewritten as n hat dl. So I'm going to plug in n hat dl down here. This simply gives us another way of writing the expression. It's not particularly important, but it is useful. The point here is, and I've just given it a bit, I've just embellished it a bit here. The point here is that we have two different dot products which will give us the same result.